Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. Uh, first of all, we just want to thank everybody who's been sticking with us and helping us to once again hit over our 500 subscriber mark. So we're really appreciative of that. And we ask that you could continue to follow us on this journey and share our videos um, as you watch along. So as you can see outside, and if you've been uh, paying attention to some of our recent videos, we are right in the thick of winter. We just had that major snowstorm that blew through here in the mid-Atlantic region. We lost a pine tree, um, but other than that, our home pretty much fared pretty well. In today's video, what we wanted to do was bring you an update on something that we do during the winter time and how we care for some of our plants. In particular today, we're gonna to be talking once again about our coleus. And our coleus are one of our favorite plants. They like to be, they're uh, a warm weather plant. So during the cold months, when the temperatures drop below 45 degrees and start hovering below freezing, that will kill them instantly. So if you love coleus and maybe some of your other outdoor plants as much as we do, a great thing to do during the winter time is bring them in to overwinter them. And you can see here our collection of what we like to call our mother plants for our coleus. Dragon is going to go through the names of these and also do a little bit of maintenance on some that need pinching. Uh, we're also going to spend some time today just giving you a little bit of tips on how we care for them, whether they're inside or out. Uh, we'll pop up a few pictures on our screen showing you how we've used them over the years at our town, town home in Maryland. We use them in our front yard. Lots of interest there, lots of beautiful colors. We also use them on our deck that we had there as well. Easy to maintain and when these are outside in the sun, that sun and outside light continuously will try to will, uh, change their color and make some of them a little more vibrant. Some of the newer variety of coleus also too have been engineered to withstand sun a lot more even though these are traditionally a shade loving plant. But even though they love shade, they need that sunlight to thrive. So having them here in a windowsill like this where we have a beautiful bay window, lots of sun, and also protecting them from those outdoor elements is perfect for them to thrive during the winter time until the temperatures rise again in the spring and we can get them back outdoors to enjoy that outdoor warmth safely. A couple of things I wanted to mention before our dragon comes along. Um, of course, we just have our, our watering can here. One thing that we've learned over the years, uh, if you are an avid houseplant lover, you know that depending on the quality of your soil or just from having plants outdoors and transferring them inside, you can typically end up with gnats. And those pesky house gnats are just annoying as all get out. One thing that we've learned to do to try to eliminate that is those gnats love to live on the top surface here. And so keeping that topsoil moist actually helps to provide a great breeding ground for them and for their eggs when they lay. So to avoid giving them that great uh, environment that they want to thrive, a better thing to do is to water at the base. So when we get to that part, you'll see that we take our watering can and we simply fill in the trays here. And these plants will then drink, the roots will drink from the base of this and come on up and fill these plants. You can see now how some of them, plants will also tell you when they need to be watered, how these are just kind of a little bit uh, sagging here. This one back here is a, is a perfect example. See these that are furled up. When we give them a drink, within a matter of minutes, those leaves will unfurl once again. Uh, another thing that we like to use for just our drip pans there, simple. These garden dishes that we get from Dollar Tree, or I should say Dollar 25 Tree, <laughs> as those prices are about to go up. But these are an amazing investment you grab these, you can see we've, we've planted, all of our coleus are sitting in one of these saucers. Um, if you have hard water issues or you just don't like to see the stains or things that are there, an easy remedy for that is grab some moss or anything and just put around. Even while you're at the Dollar Tree, pick up one of those $1 bag of, of colorful rocks and just line the outside and you can kind of hide some of those water stains. So uh, now that we've kind of gone over a little bit of all of that, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to Dragon where he's going to start identifying some of the coleus that we have here, 
talk a little bit more about the maintenance and care for them, and then we'll go through and water them and then show you a little bit how they kind of uh, rejuvenate once they've all had a drink. So as Kevin mentioned, now we're gonna go through some of these coleuses, uh, see what kind of maintenance we need to do with them, uh, pinching, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with pinching, we can look, we'll explain what pinching means and see what do, what do we need to do to make these plants be great for, as a mother plants. Uh, by mother plants, what do we mean by that? Uh, these plants, we're gonna take out in the spring and take the cuttings out of them and replant them in quite a few ways. Uh, so pinching, let's start with pinching. We're gonna take a look at this one. This is, let's see which one is this. This is our cherry pie, I believe. Uh, throughout the years, we, we were able to collect quite a variety of them. I believe that we have 13 varieties right now, 12 or 13 varieties. For the longest time, you know, back home I've, uh, in Croatia, we had coleus as an indoor plant. I've never, living in Croatia, I've never seen coleus as outside. I, mean, I would see them outside on, on the balcony for, for you know, summertime, but usually they are indoor plants. And moving here to the United States, they are pretty much annual plants, the plants that people have outside during the summer and then as soon as frost kills them, everybody kind of uh, trashes them and you know, you buy new ones in, in the spring. However, we take a little bit different approach. We take our favorite ones that we see thrive and bring them in. Usually mid-October, as soon as, like Kevin said earlier, temperatures start dropping below 45 degrees, they cannot handle. I mean, they can handle probably even 40s, but you will see them kind of start to wilt and then and, and, uh, suffer. Uh, so let's, let's talk about pinching. We already done a video about pinching and how to maintain your coleus to make it a bushy plant instead of growing into a single stalk up high. You want it to have a nice bushy plant that will kind of take over the entire top base of your, of, your, of your pot. So you can see the growth. As you know, coleus grows two leaves at a time. So you can see that here. So two leaves, there should be a leaf on each side. Then two more here, then two more here. Kind of a crisscross pattern. And then on the note of those leaves, you'll see a, a growth of another branch. We have a little better, let's see. No, they're all fairly small. With winter, they don't grow vigorously as they do in the summer, warmer months. They are, like Kevin said earlier, they love temperatures 70 to 90 degrees. They thrive in that weather. Uh, so you will not see as vigorous grow in the winter months, even though you keep them inside. However, you will see some growth. So what do we do now? Let's, let's do the pinch. So in order to encourage this right here, this little branch that is barely noticeable. Can you see it? So in order to encourage that little branch to grow and on every leaf knot, all of those to grow, you will take the lead of this plant, which is right up here. So this will keep growing up. You will take this and pinch it off, just like so. So now, energy of this plant will be focused on growing this parts. So now we're going to go around, pinch off the other ones, same like so here. One there, one there, and that kind of takes care, let's see, there's a couple of small, but you can see this one was pinched earlier couple months ago so you can see the pinched part is there you can see then how two brand new branches are branching up here and all these smaller ones are branching underneath so <clears throat> with this being a mother plant in the spring we want to have as many as we can 
of branches about that size. So you need about three, three no leaf nodes length for your uh, propagation, about that size. So I want to have as many branches that have that length so I can propagate for, for my summer plants. Now we're gonna go through, rest of them, check them out, and pinch them off. And then while we water them and put them back, we're gonna go through their names. kind of inspect that, see if there is anything overgrown, leggy. Now we're going to put them back into the window. So what I'm going to keep in mind, smaller plants like this, I will put them out more closer to the window so they can get a little bigger light exposure and the bigger plants, bushier plants, they're going to be in the back. Um, so let's, uh, let's start identifying these. So most of these names, um, we found out throughout the years, uh, but we love a website that is called uh, rosytongardens.com. They have uh, quite a good variety of uh, coleus varieties listed by the name A to C. It's a really great uh, resource. We can link this website down below for you guys. So this one right here, I want to say this is the only, yeah, this is the only all green coleus that we keep that we love. This is one of Kevin's favorites. Yes sir buddy. And it is called Electric uh, Lime. Electric Lime. Yes indeed. Um, beautiful variation of light and a darker green. Kind of yellowish almost. And it like Kevin mentioned earlier um, once they get exposed to the full sun the colors really start popping up. You can see right here in the back how plants kind of start turning. We I haven't rotated them probably in a couple of weeks. So usually every time I water them, I try to rotate the plants so they stay straight. This one I haven't, and you can see how all of these stems are kind of curving towards the sun. So you want to try to prevent that. And you can fix that by turning it just opposite way. Um, this other variety that right now kind of looks green, mostly green, is called fishnet stockings. And I know many of you that are familiar with this kind are going to say, no, it is not. It doesn't look like that. But yes, this is what lack of sunlight, direct sunlight, does to coleus. Uh, we can pop up the actual picture of, of what it looks like in the full season during the summertime. But this is what it looks like in the winter when it's inside. So we're going to put these out, these two first. Oh, you didn't talk about our beautiful centerpiece here. Oh, centerpiece is uh, kind of lily. has a nice variegated leaf, kind of orange, green, and yellow. It had a set of blooms. Blooms on this were orange, too. Yeah, blooms of deep orange. We just watered it, but it has quite a few new shoots. Down below, there's one there, one there. I think there's another one somewhere that I've seen. Yeah, there's one right, right there in the middle. But it's a nice tall centerpiece. We keep it inside during the winter, and then we put it outside in the summer. Also, another uh, drip pan here that we got from El Dollar Do Tree. <laughs> El Do Dollar Twenty Five Tree. El Dollar Twenty Five Tree. Um, so now I'm gonna go and fill up the tray with water. Another thing, another tip I just noticed the difference between these two. So this is a much smaller plant. This pot feels drastically heavier compared to this one because that one doesn't use as much water as this one does. Root system, different root system. Yeah. So we're gonna slowly water. Fill up the drip pan right there. Try not to spill all, all over your You pour it up along the vase or pot, kind of works out the best. And that's it. That will soak up the water by itself. 
and this one I'm gonna put right here and one more electric line all right next two varieties let's grab these two quite similar varieties uh, they both have kind of purplish burgundy middle variation variegation and green outside this one however has slightly different this one is kind of splashed and this one is a little more a little less less burgundy uh, so this one is cherry pie and this is what do we say Big, Big Chief Steve. or Oxford Street I'm not sure it's one of those two because it looks like either one of those you can pop picture of them on the screen so you guys can tell me which one do you think it is you put these into the window So let's do two purple ones that we have. This one I still struggle to find a name. Kevin and I call it a, what do we say? Chocolate, purple. velvet, no. chocolate. What was chocolate, it? velvet, or purple velvet, or something like that. But has a very unique velvety texture on its leaves. It's kind of pretty. Uh, if you keep it inside it starts to develop being green outline on its leaves in the summertime it becomes really dark purple almost like bluish purple which is kind of neat and our second purple is one of the proven winner varieties which is one of our favorites as well it's called uh, Wicked Witch we love this one uh, they can handle full sun or full shade and they grow quite tall about I want to say 36 inches 30 to 36 inches tall really nice a really beautiful plant all right next variety let's do let's do red what's it called red hand but this one you can really see how um, indoor being indoor affects it, its color so typically this one will be much darker uh, burgundy color and again you will see if you keep it inside it starts showing a green variegation in, in the leaves and this variety right here we really we picked up this one Walmart or something? Yeah, maybe. I think it might have been from Walmart. I just love how deep red this one is, or burgundy. You can see, compare these two, like it's, we don't know what the name of this one is, but I just love it. But as, again, not being outside, you can see here, it starts to develop a green outline. All right, we're gonna put these down. I only have one of these. For now. For now. All right, we have a couple more varieties to go through. These four look quite similar. Uh, so let's start, let's switch out these two for a second. So first two, we believe these first two right here, I believe they are Campfire and Inferno. Uh, I am not sure which one is which one uh, because they look quite similar. But again, like in the previous ones, you can see if they do not get full exposure to sun, they start changing and start to look like, what do we say, rustic orange. 
Um, this one we mentioned earlier, it's quite thirsty. We need to water this one down. The pot looks quite, uh, feels quite light. So when you water it in a second, you can see how molten leaves are, but they, they will bounce back quickly. Last but not least in this uh, variation is Trusty Rusty. Okay, so we had some technical difficulties. Our camera overheated, so we had to step away for a second and cool it away till it cools off. But we are back with our four varieties, Inferno, uh, Campfire, Trusty Rusty, and Rustic Orange. Uh, so my favorite out of four is uh, definitely Trusty Rusty. Difference between Trusty Rusty and Rustic Orange is in depth of its uh, red. Last but not least variety. At first I was not too thrilled about this variety. However, this year, I don't know if we can see it in that picture of our front yard in the town home. It really popped up nicely. One thing with this, this is, what did I say? Uh, spicy curry. This is spicy curry. So it's kind of burgundy underneath and the edges of the leaves are burgundy and that has this greenish, kind of greenish orange face up top. Thing with this variety, I'm not sure what, uh, it just always grows bushy, so there's no need really for pinching this one. As you can see, if you kind of can come in, like it instantly grows, like every leaf has a new branch growing. This one, however, is not as vigorous and fast growing into the height as all of the other ones. And I believe those are, yes, those are the old varieties that we have. You never know, New Year is coming up. We'll definitely add some more varieties. New Year is here, Dragon. Oh, new Year is here. <laughs> <laughs> well, new growing season. Let's, 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 let's look at that. New growing season is coming up a few months away. And we'll definitely add some. Looking forward to adding some more new varieties. I know Puma Winter has a couple of new varieties that came out, I believe, last year. Looking forward. We didn't see them any of our um, garden centers nearby, but we'll definitely let you know if we add some. So let me put these out in the windows, and water and everything else, and then we'll close out. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together it's so beautiful. So as we get ready to close out uh, this video, just a couple of more things we wanted to mention. We talked at the beginning about uh, bug control and gnats and things to deal with with houseplants. Over the years, we've tried a lot of things. I was notorious for researching stuff and dragon coming home and I've done something else to the plants from those uh, sticky papers for flies and gnats. We've had those. Uh, I read once about lavender dryer sheets. We had those. The house felt nice and fresh, but <laughs> none of that stuff seemed to work. Even putting down uh, a layer of all kinds of different uh, powders and things that I read about. And any of those techniques, it might work for some people, but for us in our situation, it really didn't. The things that we found that worked the most, um, three things actually. Number one, we've already talked about, which was changing the way that we watered our plants so that we deprived those gnats of the types of environment that they wanted to thrive and reproduce. By doing that watering beneath as opposed to on top, the plants love it, and then we were able to really drastically cut down our issue with the gnats and the house flies. Another thing that's really been useful for us, and this is one technique that I'm sure you, a lot of you see on a lot of gardening blogs, is to use of apple cider vinegar, 
and a little bit of dish soap. So we use those and we plant those around. We have a few here that we uh, moved as we were cleaning out our spot for our coleus. And this is cheap and effective thing that we found constantly works and you would absolutely be surprised at how many of these bugs you find. The apple cider vinegar is there to attract them with its scent and the sweetness. And as the gnats go in for a drink, then that soapy liquid then catches them and stops them from being able to uh, be released and come back. So something that uh, has worked for us, I recommend it if you are dealing with similar issues and you're looking for something to try as well. And the third thing that has really worked in conjunction with number one and number two is buying bug zappers. And just those inexpensive bug zappers that you can get on Amazon or eBay, sometimes you'll run a, across a really great deal. You may be able to get one for 20, 25 bucks. Uh, we buy them, we put them in our corners near where we have lots of plants. And that's in conjunction with the apple cider vinegar cups and then the change in how we water our plants has made all the difference for us. Drop down in the comments, let us know what some of your favorite plants are. Uh, let us know if you have any questions that maybe we could help you with on how to overwinter something that is traditionally an outdoor tropical plant and you live in a climate like ours that gets those full on four seasons and you are wanting to make sure that you save that favorite thing of yours. Um, and then let us know which one of these coleus you like the best. Uh, before we go, we have to give a shout out to our little girl, Trinity. This is the closest that Trinity has been to that fireplace since we've been lighting it over the past few weeks. So uh, she is doing really good today. She still looks at it with a lot of concern, but she likes that warmth. It was a cold day today, uh, 27 degrees earlier, although the feels like temperature outside was 19 degrees. So she decided if any day was gonna be the day she was gonna get warm, it was gonna be today. Uh, so again, Dragon and I just wanna say thank you for tuning in and watching this video. If you enjoyed any part of our journey, we ask that you would consider subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing some of our content. And while you're here, click around some of the other ones, um, and we hope to see you again real soon.